and welcome to Polly Originals with Fiona Abel Smith. Today I thought we'd do a sweet little petal cane, which is going to be this one here, and it gives us an effect like this when you put it together. I've just added a bit of clay in the middle here and some little crystals, just to give it a bit of bling. This one is made very simply with a single Skinner blend, and was the one I mentioned for those of you who watched the brocade cane tutorial, and I said I'd been trying to do something with petal cane, and ended up doing the brocade cane, this is the one I did with that. As I said, a very simple skin, um, Skinner Blend cane, this one. So all we need are three colours of clay. I'm working with Primo today, but any brand of clay will work well for this technique. I'm just using a quarter of each pack, so that's about 14 grams of each block. And then you have the tools you need, a tissue blade, and then I've just got some downloadable free graph paper which I've laminated and this is available from www.printablepaper.net and I'll put the um, link to that in the description at the bottom of this video. So for our simple Skinner blend I'm just going to do a blend of the three colours, white, fuchsia and ultramarine in the Primo and I've already conditioned these and put them through on setting number three on my machine which is an atlas where Naught is the thickest setting and nine is the thinnest. And I'm going to cut through these in a diagonal, but not going quite to the corners. I've had a little bit offset there on both of those. And that is because I want to have a little bit of the white and a little bit of the blue left at the end of the Skinner blend. And if I hadn't offset that, the colors would have merged all together. I'm going to cut the fuchsia straight down the middle, which will give me two layers of that as well. And all I'm simply doing is picking that one up and turning it around there picking that one up and turning it around there and putting those two together. So now I've got two layers of each of those colours. So if I put the blue there, fuchsia along the middle, turn this one upside down and put it together like that. You will see that I'm going to have a blend of the white going through to the fuchsia. We have a nice purpley mix here and end up with some of the blue at the end. And all I'm going to do is just chop off those bits there. You don't need to be that neat because those of you who've done Skinner blends before know that once it starts going through the pasta machine, it doesn't matter how neat you've been to start with, it'll just all go into a big blur until it becomes out into a nice blend. As with all my tutorials, I wasn't planning to take you through the Skinner blend nor conditioning the clay. I have tutorials covering both of those aspects and I'll put the links to both of those at the end of this tutorial in the description if you need to go and have a look at that. There are also loads of really good tutorials online as to how to do Skinner blends. All I simply do with mine is having cut it like that, I will fold the bottom up to the top and I'd originally put this through on setting number three on my pasta machine, but I've now got four layers of clay here, so I'll put it up two settings to setting number one on mine, and then put it through, fold first, and keep repeating, folding bottom to top, bottom to top, until I've got a, a nice Skinner blend, and I'll bring you back when I've done that. Okay, so here we have our nice blend, from white through to nice pink, going into lovely mauve, and then into blue. Whenever I'm doing cane work, I like to work in about one and a half inches, three centimeters in height. So I'm going to chop this one in two and double up. And I'm just going to lay that piece on top of that. And I will now put it back through the pasta machine, dark end first and lengthways through, ending up with the white end in order to give myself a longer strip. Now, I cut this because sometimes when you fold it in half and put it through, you end up with a very curved piece. Um, conversely, if you do cut it in half, you need to make sure that whichever end goes in last, you hold on to, to make sure it doesn't split out into a Y. So I'm going to put this back through, setting number one, blue end first. And there we go, to give ourselves a longer strip. And I'm going to put it back through the pasta machine. Now, if your pasta machine is or you know it doesn't work very well going from a thick setting down to a thin setting, take it down one setting at a time. Mine, as I know, and as you know from my previous tutorials, is fine, so I'm going to go straight from number one all the way down to number nine, um, which is the thinnest setting on my machine, because you want a nice, thin piece of polymer clay so that when we make the roll, you don't get big slabs of colour changing. You want a nice, smooth blend in this one. And I'm going to put it through the blue end first, and as always, when I move from one setting down to another, I will always turn the handle a couple of times first to make sure that any clay that's stuck underneath the pasta machine doesn't get stuck to the clay. Okay, here we have our nice long sheet of clay, and all we're going to do, I'm just going to separate that quickly, because Primo 
does have a tendency to stick to itself very quickly, which is one of its plus points. But when you've got a nice long piece like this, it can be a bit frustrating. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to start rolling right from the end and keep rolling all the way up. And I'm trying to make sure there's no air trapped in this at all as I roll, making sure it's nice and close in. And because we're doing a flower cane, we don't need to be quite as precise with this today as you do if you're doing something like a kaleidoscope because of course Mother Nature is great um, and every petal can be slightly different so don't spend too much time worrying about ends not being incredibly neat unless of course that's your thing in which case if you like that just make it neat now you may notice as I'm rolling so what I'm watching is that this stays the same size as this so if this bit gets narrower then I actually push this bit thinner and if this bit gets wider then I'll actually spread this bit and that's the way to get a nice good even roll so it's starting to get a bit wider here so I'm actually just spreading that slightly and then we go all the way up to the end and there we have our nice roll both ends and we have our Skinner blend now for those of you who've watched the Brocade tutorial um, and a few others of mine you probably know what's happening going to happen next we're going to do exactly the same with this one we're just going to seesaw our blade straight down through the middle of that so we get some as even as we can quarters And then all we're going to do, because these are very triangular in shape, we're just going to round off the corners. And then laying it flat on the tile, we're just going to push in bottom only just to change the um, profile of that shape. And I'm going to do the same with all four of those, but two at a time and then put two together. It just works better if you do two at a time and then move on to the others. Now that one is a lot smaller than the others but because we're doing a flower cane that really doesn't matter. We just push that one in small. It say it really doesn't matter for what we're doing today. I, say, I, I do like doing flower canes. They're one of the first things I started doing and I think one of the reason was because it is so forgiving um, if they don't come out perfect because every flower, every cane is very every petal in every flower is very different. Okay, so I've pushed all four together and again all I've done is just pushed along the, bo the bottoms. I haven't touched the tops and now I'm going to go along, and in a very technical term, I'm going to squidge. Just pushing all those tops together to create a triangular format. And I'm just going to flatten it down on the tile I'm using, just to make sure that the sides I've got are nicely um, regular. And then I'm going to take my measuring sheet, simply because I prefer to cut with the inch sheet than I do with the centimetres. No, no reason other than that, just purely personal preference. And very similar to the brocade cane, we're just going to pick the two pieces up and turn them that way up. Now in this one, we're putting them more or less spot on, just a tiny bit of overlap with the purple there or the blue on the outside. And what we're left with is a very much a diamond shape. And what I want to do is to change that diamond into a square. And I do that very simply by where it's elongated here, I'm just pressing in. Turn it over, same again just pressing in and all I'm trying to do is give myself some flat planes and once I've got those I can start working on them and pressing in and as I press in so it starts to become more of a square shape and that's all I'm looking for a couple of square shapes and I say couple because I know I'm about to cut it in half you'll also notice quite often when I'm doing cane work I will turn the cane the other way around and that's because particularly when you're working with one hand only you have a tendency to start strong and then get weaker and also if you're working with both hands one end tends to, one hand tends to be slightly stronger than the other so you can end up with uneven canes I'm just going to press down on the end again for those of you who've got the um, the flat shapes that go on the end to stop any cane distortions this would be another good one to use those with I always need scrap clay so I'm not that bothered about having a bit of distortion on the end. I will simply chop that off. Okay, I'm wanting to go to about three inches in length, not including the wastage on either end. So that's about right. And then again, chop down through the middle. And we start to see what pattern we've got. Okay, now this is where this one differs from the um, brocade cane, because we're going to change the shape of these slightly differently. What you want to do is you want to put both of them so that you have them facing that way up. And if you notice, you've actually got a nice white stripe down here. So I'm gonna put the white stripe, put them as if they'd just come off the same cane again. Put the white stripe so it's facing towards you so you can see it. And what we're going to do, we're going to press down the whole of this side and flatten it. 
So it's going to change the um, square shape into a triangle. And by doing that, it completely changes the shape of this, and I'll show you in just a second. It changes the shape of the cane. So holding it like that, I'm just literally going to press down hard on my tile, create a tile shape. Do the same with that one. So I know I've got the um, that piece that's going there, so I know if I press down here, this is going to be the same shape, and it's important that they both go the same way. So exactly the same, press down, creating a triangle. You want them to roughly be the same shape and size, and then when you pick it up, can you see it's created that lovely curved shape in the middle and that's simply done by pressing a square down into a triangle. Put it up the other side, make sure both sides meet and again we're back to that diamond shape. Now you could just leave it like that, that would make a perfectly nice cane if we change the shape, the um, proportion of that from a diamond into a petal shape but I'm going to do it once more just to give us uh, more of a pattern. So exactly the same as we did before, I want to change the diamond into a square so I'm just going to press in along those sides giving myself more of a square shape and giving myself some of those flat sides and planes that I can then work on. And exactly the same again. So I want to reduce this down to it's about three inches, seven and a half centimeters in length. And I'll use both hands. Sometimes I just do that to pull along it. It's a good way of um, stretching it out, keeping it nice and even inside. And when we've gone to about the right length, I'll get the measuring sheet back. You'll notice each time I'm doing it slightly longer because I know I've got wastage on either end. Um, but rather than bothering to chop it off, I keep working. Because I've, what I've found in the long run is if you keep chopping it off, you keep getting more wastage. So the more you chop, the less of the cane you actually have. So that's what we've got so far. And then we're going to do exactly the same again. So we're going to push those two bits flat. So again, putting them so that you can see where they are. Now for me, I'm just going to actually start pressing just slightly. And that's another thing to do. You can actually just start pressing them and keep them um, pressed down in place so that you know when you're working on this one that when you move over to the other one, it's going to be the right side you're pressing down. And then just press them both back down into triangles. Again, you're going to try and make them the same diameter and length. And now when you pick it up, you'll end up with another swirl in the middle as well. Put that together down that side. And now we have our finished cane. So all we need to do now is to change the shape of it. So again, we've got a diamond shape, but this time we want to make it slightly teardrop. So effectively, we want it to be diamond, but in the other direction. So the first thing we're going to do again is press in to make it square. And then I'm actually going to flatten. Can you see what I'm doing? I'm pressing in with my thumb and finger. I'm going to flatten all the way along the edges here this way, forcing it out this way to make more of a petal shape. And for me, I'm going to have this bit as being in the middle of my petal. So I'm actually going to pinch that in, really emphasize the pinched part of the petal. And then we can roll over the top to give ourselves more of a petal shape. And then you have the moment of truth where you chop down two, three, and we'll see what we've got. And then you have a lovely stripe, which creates a really nice petal effect. So I'm not going to show you all the things you can do with these petals because there are so many tutorials out there showing you how to put things together and I know most of you who watch these have already got a lot of polymer experience. But just for it, in case anyone hasn't, I will just very simply take some um, slices off this. And one thing I do when I'm slicing, because this has a flat plane here, I will put the flat plane flat on the board here and the bit I've got missing, so I've got air effectively under here. So because of that, if I press straight down and cut straight down, I would squish this side down, instead of which I'm going to cut across like that, and that way you maintain the shape. So I'm just going to move it towards me slightly more so I can see what I'm doing, because I tend to look over the top. And chop down one, two, three, four, five. And then we can start putting those together. They weren't particularly even cuts, those ones. I'm sure you will all do a much better job just to show you how it can go together. And curl the ends up slightly, make more of a 3D effect. And then if you just take a little bit of clay, let's take a little bit of the pink we had earlier. And just pop that down in the centre. And 
as I said, with the one I did earlier, which was a blue-purple mix. I then just added a little bit of um, crystal into the middle. So there you go. That is a very quick petal cane tutorial from one simple Skinner blend. And I say I, I really enjoyed doing it. I just love the fact that when you change it from the square to the triangle, you get that lovely motion and circular movement within your petals. I hope you enjoyed that tutorial. There are more to come. Um, not all cane work. I've been asked for a couple other things that I've been doing recently, so I will try and do a couple of tutorials that aren't just canes, although, as you know, I do like my canes. But anyway, thank you very much for watching. If you haven't already done so, please do subscribe to my channel, Polly Originals, um, and then you'll be updated as and when I post any new videos. And I'll see you next time. Bye.